Hello everyone, welcome to the new episode of this new series about data. In this series, we'll talk about fetching data from various sources like Google Analytics, Google Sheets, Search Console, MySQL, MongoDB and how to perform various operations on them. We'll also learn how to create a beautiful and interesting data visualizations. By the way, if you missed our previous tutorial about retrieving data from Google Sheets and exporting them to HTML table, have a look at it as well. You will find a link in the description. I'm Michal from mdbootstrap.com and today I will show you how to fetch a data from Google Analytics and how to create your own simple analytics dashboard using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This is what we will create today. In the upper left corner is our simple dashboard where we will display the data collected from the Google Analytics. In the lower left corner you can see the Google Analytics of one of my projects. This is where we get the data. You have probably noticed that this data is not identical and you may ask why. Unfortunately, there are slight differences in the data between various Google tools. I can explain why, but that's just the way it is. Fortunately, these are really slight differences and do not spoil our analysis. But before we start, a small request. If you like what we do, please give a thumbs up to this video, leave us a comment and subscribe to our channel. It will help us grow and create more valuable tutorials for you in the future. And now, without further ado, let's get started. During our work with data, we'll use a free library Easy Data. Easy Data is a new project built by MDB team and it's actually a small plugin, but it will significantly facilitate our work with Google tools and other data sources. If you want to support the development of the Easy Data project, give it a star on GitHub. We will be very happy to see this project growing. However, before we start writing the code, we need to do a few preparations. First of all, we need to do the appropriate configuration on the Google site. Go to the Google Cloud Platform website you will find the link in the video description and click the button next to the logo. I have Google Sheets tutorial written here because I created an application with this name before, so for you it will be different. Anyway, click it. Next, click New Project in the top right corner. Next, name it whatever you want. I will name it Google Analytics Tutorial. And then click Create. Then, make sure you have selected the correct project in the menu on the top. Choose the name you just created. So, in my case, it will be Google Analytics Tutorial. Next, we need to create credentials for our newly created application. Extend the menu on the left and hover APIs and Services. Then click Credentials. Next, click Create Credentials and choose OAuth Client ID. Then click Configure Consent Screen. Next, choose External and click Create. Then we need to type a name of our app. Once again, I will name it Google Analytics Tutorial. We also need to provide our email. Next we need to provide an email contact to the developer responsible for this app, so I will use the same email. Let's click save and continue. Here you don't need to do anything, just click save and continue and here the same, save and continue. And then add the summary step we can click back to dashboard. Now again click credentials, create credentials, OAuth client ID once again and here choose web application and we can leave this name web client one. Then we have to enter the URLs with which we want to use our application. If you are going to do this tutorial exactly like me, then you need to enter localhost here because we will be testing our application locally before we publish it on the internet. 
but at the end of this video I will show you how to publish the application to the internet as well and you can do it too. So here in the authorized JavaScript origins click add and we'll add two localhost addresses http localhost and port 5500 and one more 5501 5, and here in the section authorize redirect URIs we'll use the same addresses and then click create then we can click OK here and close this model and the last thing we need to do in Google Cloud Platform is to enable Google Analytics API. So in the menu on the left, click Dashboard and click Enable APIs and Services. And here type Google Analytics. And from this list choose Google Analytics Data API. Click Enable and that's it. Ok, now let's move on to Google Analytics itself. To download data from Google Analytics, of course you need a working Google Analytics account that contains some data. So I will use the account of one of my site projects. To access the data, you must either be the owner of the account or have administrator rights. So if you are the owner, you don't have to do anything, but if you are not, you have to ask for the appropriate permissions. The permissions are given in the settings tab, here, and here, account access management. So here you can check your permissions or grant them to someone if you are the account owner. Now let's download EasyData plugin. Go to easydatamdbgo.io, you will find the link in the description and click download button. Then choose Google Analytics example. Next, unzip the package and open it with code editor. One important note. To be able to fetch and display data from Google Analytics or any other Google tools locally on your computer, you will need Live Server plugin. So if you want to do exactly like I did in this tutorial, you should use the same editor, Visual Studio Code. To install the plugin, click View and then Extensions and type Live Server. Then choose the first item on the list and install the plugin. I already have Live Server installed in my Visual Studio Code, so I will not do it again. Now let's come back to our directory and open index.html file. To open our project with Live Server plugin, simply right click on index.html file and choose Open with Live Server. The plugin will open new tab in your browser. Now let's take a look at this URL. This is the port number 5500. We provided this number when we were creating credentials for our app on Google Cloud Platform. Do you remember? Here is this number. We also provided another port 5501 in case we will need to use another port. So now make sure that you have the same port here and if you have a different number here, you need to provide other URL here in authorized JavaScript origins and authorized redirect URIs. Now, as you can see here, we use localhost name and here we use IP address. So what we need to do is to replace this IP address, but we are leaving uh, the port number as it is. So let's use localhost and click enter and it should work the same. And remember, if you don't change it, our Google credential will not work for our app, so we will not be able to fetch 
and data from Google Analytics. Now let's have a look what do we have in our index.html file. So at the top of the file you can find a link to Font Awesome, Google Fonts, Roboto and MDB UI Kit CSS. So this is not necessary for you to fetch data from Google Analytics, but MDB UI Kit is a useful tool, useful library, which provides you an additional styles and allows you to create a beautiful UIs and beautiful data visualizations. Below we have an HTML with this UI on the right. So here's a navbar with a few useful links for you. So to easy data documentation, to Google Analytics example, of uh, easy data plugin and to MDB UI kit so you can explore it on your own and below we have a main layout with placeholders for our data that we'll fetch from Google Analytics so we'll fetch a users number page views and sessions below main section we have scripts so the first script is javascript of MDB UI kit and next below MDB UI kit is Google API so we need this to work with uh, any Google tools and below we have easy data script which allows us to interact with Google Analytics data. And at the bottom of the file we have a small JavaScript snippet where we will provide our client ID. So this is an ID of an app which we created in uh, Google Cloud Platform. And here we will provide a property ID of our Google Analytics account that we want to fetch data from. And here you can see we have a few settings about data that we want to fetch, but we'll get to this later. So first let's fill our client ID. So coming back to our uh, to Google Cloud Platform and here in the credentials of our app. So make sure that you choose the correct app. Here we can find client ID. So let's copy this and let's paste it here. Now we need a property ID of our Google Analytics account. So go to your Google Analytics and here in the admin section you need to click on property settings and here use our property ID. By the way, make sure that you use Google Analytics 4, not the previous versions, because if you have other versions, the older one, you will not see the same UI as I show you right now. So make sure it's Google Analytics 4, as you can see here. So let's copy and paste our property ID to our HTML. And now we need to do one more important thing on Google Cloud Platform. So go back to Google Cloud Platform and here on and the menu on the left, click OAuth Consent Screen and let's here add a test users. So let's add our email. Let's save it. And now let's see if it works. Let's get back to our dashboard. And now before we try to authenticate, it is a good idea to clear the cache of our application. So let's open the console. And here in application tab, let's find a cookies and let's clear a cache for our local host. Now let's close it. And now we can try to authenticate. Let's click login and choose your account that you granted access. Type your password. Click next. And click continue. and check all the boxes here and click continue again.
Now let's have a closer look at how exactly does it work in our code. Here we define a start date and below an end date. Then we defined the metrics we want to fetch users, page views and sessions. Then we simply get a given HTML element by ID, like for example this display users is a simple spam element and we paste our data inside. If you want to fetch other data from Google Analytics, go to Google documentation, you will find the link in the description of this video and here you can play with all the possible options. So for example, if you want to change 7 days to 14 days, we can fetch completely different numbers. By the way, did you know that thanks to MD Bootstrap you can use free hosting for your projects? We call it MDB Go and it's really great. Visit mdbgo.com for more information. In the description of this video you will also find a link to the detailed tutorial on how to use MDB Go hosting and how to install MDB CLI which is a fantastic and free supporting tool that provides many useful functionalities. Now, let me just show you how easy it is to publish our newly created project on the internet thanks to MDB Go. I already have MDB CLI installed on my computer, so now all I need to do is to run my terminal and then I need to enter the path of the project I want to upload. So here is the directory where we have downloaded the MDB package and where we have been working during this tutorial. So let me just copy this path and let's enter this. And now I need to type only a single command MDB publish and I will choose NPM package manager and then all I need to do is to choose a name for my project. I will name it Easy Data GA Tutorial. and then accept all other options and after a few seconds my project is available at this link. Let's see if it works. And yes it does. After a few simple clicks our application is available on the internet. There is one problem here because our data are not displaying and that's because in Google Cloud Platform we need to also authenticate this new domain because as you remember so far we were using localhost. So I'm not going to go through this process again but you already know this so you can add your domain, add your URL to the credentials and then you can authenticate your app and make it available on the internet as well. I know, this is a lot of configuration to fetch a simple data from Google Analytics, but unfortunately this is how Google handled this. But after doing this a few times you will get used to it. Anyway, if you like the tutorial, please give us a thumbs up. And that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you found it useful and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.